Hey guys, Hunter Trophy Hunter here with another Killer Frequency video. Let's get started. All right. Welcome to 189.16 The Stream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. Well, no, I it's know not this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. No. You want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course now. It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my uncle Ron. His first name's Peter, but he never liked this. Okay. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper Ro <laughs> Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza! <laughs> Starting at Jack Son it. of a bitch! Stop calling us! God damn it, Peggy, this is your fault! My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. <laughs> <sighs> Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. Oh, God. <laughs> caller. Oh, God. Is it Ponty Pizza? Ponty. Ponty's pizza <laughs> always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> <What a> freak. <laughs> Forest? Forest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forest? I hope. The whistling man gets him with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest. Sorry, sorry, that was, that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Okay. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's <laughs> Pizza. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, so Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don, Don, we played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes. He's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park, but I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Mm. Shit. I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. Boy, I wish he muzzled that thing and oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. Straight. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. I need your help. I need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. 
What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad. Seems a little suspicious. And it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. <sighs> we'll see what we can do. Thank you, Forrest. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into <laughs> her apartment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who, but to help someone. All right, so we have to go back in that room then. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. So you go back in this creepy basement. Oh wait. Dang it. Wasting time. It's going to the wrong one. I think we saw the papers here somewhere. Didn't we? Order delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. This system's not even installed at Woodside. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's run back upstairs. Why am I getting so lost all of a sudden? Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Uh, do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... Nah. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay. If you say so. When you're ready, shut the music off. Oh yeah, I forgot about Line that part. one. Whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Let's give her the alarm test activation code. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Whoa. Is she? What's happening? Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the ring! <laughs> Don't ever come back here again! I'm calling the cops! Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. 
That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. <laughs> He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. Yes. That's a done deal. I... Thank you. Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Okay. Gallows no, Creek. Development. Here's some music. Trophy unlocked. What just happened? Um. What we're on there? So the whistling man is a woman. I know. Uh, I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek Strange. Really, Forrest? <laughs> Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next lying. caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, ma'am. Murphy? Hey, Murphy. Hey, What's, What's up, going man? on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help, you know? You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh, I don't know, really. All <laughs> right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. Well, I went toe to toe with it was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. Oh what? my God! I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? Nothing. You and Fernando just stay safe. Right. Sorry I couldn't help y'all more, man. Now, you can you to ask me about games. Forrest, we have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy. I think that's all we've got time for right now. Hmm. All right, all right. I'll catch y'all with the gator talk later. Please, Murphy, Not please do. Well, folks, that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller has more they can tell us. Let's find out. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Uh, what happened? Somebody's been stabbed. Can, can you tell me what happened? We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh, 
no. Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left! They left him to bleed out! I waited until they were gone, then <laughs> dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! I can't drive, so... Forest. The ambulance was destroyed in the explosion oh, at the gas that's station. That's right. You should get all the info you can. What's, What's your, friend's your friend's name, name Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Okay. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. Okay, okay. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was mm. a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Oh, God. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right, uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs, keep him warm and calm. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? How is Jason? I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I need help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No, don't touch the no, knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Let's hope Casey, so. is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Alright, we need to secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. 
Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer, some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? Uh, I guess I've got my jacket. Use the laundry. <laughs> Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to buy you some new whites, Jason. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Sure. Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. So what do you want, Peggy? What's so important that you had to interrupt What's me up, saving Peggy? someone's we life? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Any suggestions? Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I... Never mind. So... How does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go, Go on. on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. It's probably my birthday. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not going to like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Yeah, anyway, I think we all do. Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. Okay, thanks, Peggy. I just have to look around. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Key, 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 key. Ooh, master of unlocking. So, his office must be down here. Private. Looks like I need a four-digit code. Um, where's this safe? Oh. My birthday, November 7th. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hint, very important date. All right, well, what else is very important? Uh, should we just grab anyone? Where's the intercom? Oh, wait, there it is. I'm in, Peggy. I found the floppy disks. Just put it in the slot, right? You got it. Remember, 
We need somebody with medical training who lives near 25 Nancy Drive. Let me know when you've got somebody. And don't waste time on anybody that can't help us. Reginald Scott? Nancy Drive. We got this. It was Reginald. And if he dies, he dies. Peggy, I'm coming. My sweet peg. Uh, Peggy? Oh my god, was I supposed to put the button down there? No. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I got the safe open, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid, and we need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Anything further away than a street or two is probably too far. Anyone who ticks those two boxes is our best bet. Got it. I'll take another look at the files. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Wow, really? John. Yeah, it's perfect. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please, pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw oh, up. He's going into shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the police seem to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate Jason's legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. additional don't remove the bandage apply another one on top of it do you still have something you can use i've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm so i'll use my jacket i can always get a new one true, true. i'll fix his bandage and get him warm hold on please oh. sorry sorry i'm done you're gonna be okay jay I don't even know what I do in a situation like this. He's not doing well. Is he? Is he gonna? You gotta be strong for Jason. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. Please, I, I can't give him what he needs. Please, sit down. I can't live with him. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? 
It was when John. When you call John Hedges, he lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. No, somebody's been stabbed. man has stabbed. been stabbed by the whistling man. Or, never mind. He's lost a lot of blood, and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. Stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach, and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies, and I'll head right over. What a Damn, hero. Guys on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, this is John Hedges. I'm here about Jason. Please let me in. Hell yeah. With that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. I've been ready. But, uh, I gotta end this video, guys. This is 30 minutes of excitement. Thank you guys so much for watching.